So let me welcome Alesh again, this time not as the KD EV president, but as the gold champion for K the KD goals. It's all about the apps. Take it away, Alesh. Uh, thank you, Adam. Um, the slides, can somebody put them on? In the meantime, I'm going to introduce myself. Um, my name is Alej, like you can now see on the slides. Um, and I'm going to talk about the Kitty. It's all about the apps goal, uh, a goal that well, was led by, by Jonathan until, until recently. And well, Jonathan, hi. And well, thanks a lot for all of your work. Um, The arrows don't work. All right. Well, um, like it says here, and like Alan said, uh, I am also the KDV president right now. But I also have been ha have been developing uh, KD software for well, I generally say for over a decade, but it's almost a decade and a half now. Uh, and I actually started uh, developing apps, uh, in particular uh, key algebra even before I, uh, I started developing KDE because the application started uh, outside, which I think it's it's interesting in the apps kind of perspective in that, well, you can be a small project. You don't have to be like a whole community around something like you sometimes end up being, but you can just do it from, from, from home rather easily. In this case, my home was, and incidentally still is uh, in Barcelona. And um, well, when I'm not making apps, I am working for Blue Systems, uh, also developing KD software uh, around. Now, um, I would I wanted to give a little bit this context in that uh, KD has had apps for a very long time, right? Like, in fact, it would be very difficult to imagine a community like ours. Uh, without apps in itself, apps being well, whatever is that the the user is interacting with the system that doesn't feel like it's on the background, right? Uh, nobody would consider maybe uh, that uh, Plasma is uh, an app in itself, like the Plasma shell. Nobody would consider, I don't know, I guess Windows is. Not sure what the right uh, components there are of there or on macOS on Android. Also, it's very clear this distinction. Like in general, apps are something that you can sometimes install that you can uh, uninstall eventually unless you're using an evil operating system. And it also has the advantage that, like I said earlier, you can be having some kind of problem and say, I want to have a piece of software. Uh, that solves this and that I I can interact with in 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 my systems and and then you can just use an an application to to do that and you can do that without having to well implement a whole operating system which is uh, well not all that desirable um, in KDE for example I am pretty sure that the first uh, contributions were the window manager, of course, because if you don't have uh, Windows, you don't have, well, anything you can interact with. But then I'm pretty sure maybe like the second or third uh, big steps were probably what ended up uh, becoming Conqueror and what ended up becoming, I guess, the uh, system settings applications, right? Because, well, how are you going to interact with your system beyond beyond those windows? Uh, and in KDE, we've had very famous applications that uh, have been developed since the very beginning and uh, nowadays are super popular. Thinking about uh, Kate or Ocula, Ocula, well, it changed names over time, but well, there, there are things that well, were necessary uh, 25 years ago or so and well, are still necessary today and, and we still we still develop them. OK, that went a bit. 
direct. So what I want to, to discuss today is um, a bit the process I have been going through when starting to look into the apps topic. Now, let's see what we've been distributing overall, what we've been, um, how we've been reaching to our users and, and seeing what kind of things have been working and uh, well, more or less, or what kind of things uh, well, could be improved uh, more in terms of, of our um, publishing platforms rather than actual features in, in each of every application. Because, well, my plan, like I'm going to discuss a bit later on, is to, well, be talking with the different uh, communities over over the next few months and and discuss how we can improve these the, the situation and make sure that that the that the experience from those KDE products uh, is as optimal as possible uh, on on each of the platforms and well that we can we can make the most out of out, out of our work both in our perspective but also for our users because in practice well you never develop a project without having a user in mind and caring for a user. Um, we have in these uh, fronts maybe two big categories. There is um, well, whatever is Linux because it's a big topic for us. Uh, I mean, there's obviously as well the source code releasing, but releasing source code doesn't really give us much information. Uh, also, we don't get to control very well how our users use our software, which ends up meaning that you can be developing an application, but then your users will be having, uh, well, problems that come from it being a different version or something like that, right? So I think that's from a KD perspective, what we're interested in is uh, in positioning ourselves in the situation where we're in, in, in control of um, the thing that the, our users get to use if they want to have uh, the optimal experience that we consider they can have and then optimizing for that workflow, right? Um, Starting with Linux, oh, I uh, have. Starting with Linux, uh, started looking at, at Snap. They do have uh, very interesting and big uh, dashboards with with information. And I thought, well, let's see who uh, is using or what it, what it looks like uh, our presence there. Um, something that we can see over there straight away is that. Um, the KD framework snap, which isn't an application in itself, but well, a platform to uh, create applications, has uh, reported over half a million um, active devices. That supposedly means I don't know the actual definition, but they are devices that are actively actively being used. It's not like that install that you did one day and then you forgot about, but it's something that you regularly are starting. Um, this happens because there's, well, all of our apps are based on that uh, platform, uh, but well, not only ours, since we're providing um, a platform for uh, cute applications, which is what we generally do. Um, there's other components from elsewhere that they decide to rely on the work from the Kitty community so that you don't have to um, to create, to compile, to build all of these components once again. It also allows their users to well, share this, this content with, with, with us and will not have it duplicated uh, several times on their systems. Um, as far as our apps goes, you will see that uh, it's kind of generally always uh, the same components that are the most uh, uh, used uh, everywhere. Here we can see that Ocular and Krita. I had to go like one one by one through them, so I hope I didn't forget 
other top ones, but those were the two that I saw that had the most installations. Crete and Ocular had over 50,000 active devices. Now, this doesn't sound like a whole lot, admittedly, but then let's remember that this is just a way for um, Ubuntu uh, users to install their applications or, well, any uh, Linux users could be potentially using those apps, but, well, they have other alternatives. We'll go through some of them, like Flatpak or, or AppImage, but uh, then there's also um, the distribution packages for which we don't really have much, much information, or I don't really know how to, how to get it. Um, those two, like I said, uh, around 50,000 devices, but then the, there's a whole lot of applications that are between uh, like 5,000 and 15,000 uh, 15, uh, device, uh, devices, and then there's a whole lot of, of applications listed over there, over 100 I, I counted. Again, I had to count like one by one. Um, thanks a lot to uh, Jonathan for uh, a lot of, of this work. This has been, uh, the, well, seems to be working very well. Now, the other one we can look at uh, is uh, Flatpak which would be a uh, very similar technology to, to SNAP. Um, their information is a bit harder to read. Uh, I'm talking about Flatpak here, but then those numbers are coming from FlatHub explicitly. Um, obviously, I guess, if you know how the technology works. Um, the, you don't have to register to their site to um, tell about yourself. So they don't know about active devices, but you do know about uh, downloads because, well, you have to serve them, so you can just as well count them and and count on it. Um, the the data is a bit harder to read, but we can see over there that we have uh, the platform again being our most notable component. With uh, so what what since what they're showing us. Um, is, is downloads over there. What we get is that whenever there's an update, there's a big uh, spike of, of downloads. And well, we could count those as active devices, I guess, although that wouldn't be entirely right. Um, the spikes were went up to around 200,000, but um, well, take that number as whatever it means to you. Um, in Krita and Acula, again, we could see between 5,000 and 10,000 uh, spikes, which again were seemingly, I didn't, I wasn't able to go through all of them because again, I had to go one by one, but, uh, but it's, they, they seem to be uh, among the most used ones, uh, well, understandably, because they're very good apps. Um, but we do have over 50 applications. We do have a team of, of people uh, developing these in this case. And but if you're interested in the technology, uh, join them by all means. Um, and then there's the rest of Linux. There's a image. I don't really have information on, on the amount of users. I don't really know if we have good ways of, of measuring them. Um, maybe this is something that we could include somewhere to, well, be able to, you know, to, to, to make this picture a little bit fuller, but, but it's generally complex, not only uh, no Linux is true, realistically, is, uh, well, asking their users to log in or, or anything, but they're also setting up um, uh, mirrors and having mirrors sending information would start to uh, be even weirder. So we don't really have those numbers. Um, but we do know that they're in the in the millions, uh, presumably. And I mean, it, it kind of makes sense. In, in, in practice, it's the way we've been installing applications since forever in Linux. And it's what most distributions are prepared to do by default, right? Now in KDE, we've also been uh,
doing other platforms for for the longest time. Um, I'm gonna try and go through them. I'm gonna start through Android. Android, we do have uh, Kitty Connect, which incidentally is the only application that uh, I've seen that isn't uh, well built in in Qt and C++ uh, software like we generally do. But it's it's built with uh, Android normal technology being well Java and well whatever that is called all of that uh, it has uh, over 200,000 uh, active installs being again that we know that they're fully tracked also KD Connect is on F Droid uh, meaning that um, there there are potentially more users. Uh, that we don't know about. We do have normal application, normal for KDE applications also available for Android. Um, we did have some on the Play Store before, which were removed for for reasons. We are working on trying to get them uh, back again uh, with automatized uh, systems uh, at the moment. So far, it's been working with F-Droid. Nico and Folger specifically have been uh, working a lot on, on that front. We have a whole lot of applications that are, are available over there. You can, uh, if you want to try it, give it a, a test by going to uh, F-Droid and adding our our repository. Or, or yeah, well, that's, that's the way to, to test it. Um, you can also see them on on binaryfactory.ga.org, where but you will see how everything works. Um, yeah, if you're interested in Android, there is this matrix room slash other things. Feel free to join it. There's also a mailing list in case you want to send a big blob of text that you want us to read. Um, well, while sitting down and sipping coffee. Another very popular operating system, I don't know if you've heard of it, it's called Windows. Windows has been one of the uh, platforms that Twitter specifically has been taking uh, more seriously. Uh, you can see uh, well, their presentations, Hala specifically, uh, on the topic. They have an amazing story over there, and I think it's super interesting. I recommend you to look at at Hala's talk uh, in LIS if you didn't see it. But in any case, they have about 3 million uh, active installations over there, which is a super interesting number, uh, all things considered. But also, we do have uh, applications that we've been shipping from our normal releases uh, into the Windows Store. In this case, Kate and Ocular, we can see that they are in around 100,000, which is not in the millions like Krita, but I think that it also shows that we do have a very nice chance over there at, at adding value and, and providing something that uh, users can use. I think that it's it's useful to be to be there as a as a way to introduce the the world into the work our community does. Um, Something that I didn't mention about Android, but it's probably also interesting is that, for example, Android, it allows us to well, test the, the mobile use case uh, better than probably Plasma Mobile can even do today, since well, everyone literally has uh, an Android device right now. Uh, in the case of Windows, well, Literally, uh, it's very hard to buy devices without Windows installed. So all of these being able to just have KD applications running, I think that it's a very important milestone and well something that that the, our some people in our community are doing very good work on. Uh, again, they do have a matrix chat that you can join. It's on KD Windows. We've not been very um, innovative on the names of our rooms, but well, you can use that on, on your advantage. KD Windows uh, on a Matrix, as well as the mailing list. 
The other one, which is admittedly quite uh, famous as well, is um, Mac OS. Nevertheless, we don't have numbers again. I don't think we have many applications on the store. Um, we do have our account on the store, but I think that it's just being used to um, have a key so that we can sign our packages. But I don't think our applications are being listed over there. Uh, so we don't have numbers on users of those. Um, I think that this could be something interesting. Uh, I was mentioned that there is a somewhat stable community around Homebrew that you can use. I've never used Homebrew. I barely know what it is, so I, I, I wouldn't know. But in any case, if you have a Mac, you want to use more KD applications and you would like to help, you can join at KD-Mac Matrix channel or the mailing list. And oh man, sorry about the focus thing. Um, Join the chat or the mailing list and talk to the to the team. I'm sure they will be interested. Like I said, there's a bunch of information that we don't have. There's Linux also beyond Linux. There's the BSDs, for example, and other um, special operating systems that do have KD applications running and available. Uh, we don't have numbers over there. I would be surprised, though, that they were on the scale of the numbers we've been discussing. Well, at least the BSDs. On, on Linux, I can imagine that like the rest of Linux to be bigger than Flatpak and Snap combined. So um, KD, KD, we're a community. We have a ton of products. All of these um, applications are released generally separately, um, either being within KD Gear, which is what used to be called KD Applications before, and it was called as well um, KD Source Compilation, I think it was called, and it's been called different things. But it basically is a um, regular release of useful KD software that is meant to be used with Plasma, but not exclusively everything in the KD gear you should be able to use on other Linux systems or maybe Windows and other operating systems as well. We can find there uh, the big suites that we've been um, having within for the longest time, like KD PIM, KD Edu, KD Games. Um, there's also some applications that are in there separately, like KD Connect, for example or um, NeoChat, I believe, uh, since recently. Or or maybe maybe NeoChat does read this separately. In any case, it's something we need to mention as well. We don't release every application uh, in parallel. There are some applications that appear um, on their own. And something worth uh, noticing is that right now we also have a Kitty Gear mobile, which is a bunch of applications that uh, sprouted from well, having a Plasma mobile right now and having this need for, well, having everything released and uh, well, neatly packaged. Well, now we are having these releases, which I believe are monthly. Um, well, you can see all of the icons over there. They look lovely. Um, but use them. Most of these applications, by the way, you can generally use on the desktop as well. They're built with Kirigami, which is a pretty cool framework to create applications on. And by the way, there's going to be a puff about um, creating applications for Plasma Mobile uh, on Monday, I believe, well, during the buff days. So feel free to join them. Um, there was a new website created for listing applications uh, properly. It's called apps.k.org. Just take a look. Browse it a little bit, see if there's something that you always wanted, but you never knew it existed. I think it's 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 quite useful. Um, it also has direct links on how to install it on your different platforms, so it can make your life a bit easier. Uh, 
All right. Now, as a goal, if you think that the different things are a bit too specific for you, but you would like to have the discussion at large, maybe because you are an application developer, maybe because you think the problem is very important, feel free to join us on the Matrix channel. Um, we're going to have uh, both for a lot of the topics that we've been discussing today, uh, also during the week. Take a look and don't hesitate to join. You don't need to ask for permission. You don't need to ask for uh, anything. You can just go in there and you have something in your mind that you want, you would like to share and would be useful. Just do it um, by all means. And now I think that we still have some time for questions. Hi, thank you very much, Alex. We yes, we still have time for questions, although no questions in the widget yet. Uh, Luigi and I will, of course, monitor and forward any of them. Um, but maybe people are waiting for the um, roundtable session for the Gold Champions, when a whole session dedicated for questions and discussion with the Gold Champions. So maybe. Maybe that's why we don't see any yet. Well, I'll be there. Yes. Uh, Alex, do you have any buffs that you would like to advertise in the meantime coming up this, this week? Well, you know I do. And I think I already said so, but I can repeat. On Monday, there's a box for Linux applications, uh, KDE applications on Mac, on Windows, on Plasma Mobile. Join them. We need you. We should have the Uncle Sam thing. <laughs> I need yes. you in my bath. Yes. OK, we do have questions coming in. Would you like me to read them to you? Yes, please. On the KDE Gear mobile mobile uh, slide, what application was the one with the blue square icon? I was fearing that this would happen. It looks like there's been a misrendering of sorts. Um, when I looked at the slide on my system, it looked fine. It's a dialer. It's a, it, it, in my system, it has a small phone from the time where phones were not mobile, otherwise it would be a rectangle in a rectangle. But no, it looked like a phone kind of thing. Okay. Sorry. Next one is, do you think KDE should focus on one way of delivering apps to users or stick to one that works best on each platform? Well, we cannot do one for every platform, right? On Android, you can, you have to do APKs and Google Play. On uh, on Windows, you need to be on the Windows Store. Um, and I think that talking about these more third-party uh, platforms, catering to the system that the platform puts at our um, reach is the right way to go uh, for many reasons that I think that are probably obvious. Otherwise, we can just discuss them uh, sometime on the box. Uh, I imagine you might be thinking about Linux. And I think that Linux in this topic, it's um, a bit of a moving target still. So I wouldn't see ourselves uh, all narrowing ourselves into one of those. I think that there's things still to um, to uncover what will uh, well, what will be supported on every distro, what mm, what is monetization monetization looking like on the different uh, platforms. Uh, I think that there's a lot of topics that are very important, and as technologists, don't really pay attention to uh generally but they are going to matter a lot and doing this properly will make a huge difference as for now offering snaps and flat packs for example doesn't seem to be 
a huge burden. Well, in practice, we've been packaging all of our software for like 50 distros or so, uh, well, through the different teams in the different distros, but in practice, it's been done by people all around the projects. So adding a couple of them doesn't seem to be all that bad. And I'd, uh, like you could say, it's bringing a lot of, of users already that, that trust in these solutions. So uh, let's continue doing that as long as it works. And when we see something that is unequivocally um, desirable, let's go with it. Yeah. Um, OK, a question from Bjorn. How about using K user feedback to estimate at least lower boundary of rest of Linux users? We are using it for some applications. For example, Kate um, is doing it already. Plasma is doing it already. In practice, what this means, though, is not that you're counting um, people using Linux. You're counting people who enables the checkbox, right? Which is very important if you're using some of our software to enable that checkbox so that, um, well, we can get all of this information and use it to develop our products. But in practice, that would be always be a crippled number, like, like just knowing the people who does Snap, for example, right? It's a valid number, it's a true number, I believe but it will still be a crippled number. And by the way, I am not saying that we're ever going to have a non-crippled number. In the free software communities, we care about privacy. And there's cases where you will not want your software to be talking elsewhere. When I'm saying cases, it doesn't mean that it's always the case. But you will always have the case where you don't want your uh, system to be talking elsewhere. Um, I see Kaiser feedback as a good way to communicate what a portion of our um, user base thinks and wants. But as for counting users, I hardly think that it's going to be the right way of doing it. But I can be proven wrong. If you have a good plan, uh, join our pubs, our meetings, and let's see what we can do there. OK, thanks. Uh, the next question is from Bushan. Do you think that improving experience of third-party developers who use KDE frameworks or libraries should be part of this goal, or that is a slightly different goal? It's definitely an important topic for KDE. I am not sure it's something that this goal should be about because this goal is about the KDE apps. But then, for example, like I said in the in the beginning, I started being a third uh, party developer of an app, and I ended up being, well, who I am today, which is very much in KDE. So there is definitely a path for a third party application developer to flourish into something that benefits the community at large. Um, I mean, we can try it. Uh, improving the developer experience is something that has been part of our goals uh, in the past. Like, well, you all very well know, for example, through the onboarding goal, it's something we touched on. It's something we can touch over here on 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 some on some level. And some things that are definitely part of the of this goal would definitely um, have a good impact on our third party developers. So I don't know. Uh, join the box and let's have the discussion about what kind of things we can do. In practice, it's not what I am going to do as the goal anyway. It's more about well, what kind of discussions we can have so people who are not doing work today, because it's not like I can personally do any more KD work right now, but other people who join, they have to join us and see what kind of things they can do and then work together, right? Yeah. Uh, OK, we still have time for questions. This comes from Benson. What was the first app you developed, and why did you develop it? Uh, I started developing K-Algebra because, I don't know, 
I was 18 or so, and I was bored, I guess. There was this application that was uh, similar-ish to very original the algebra that I quite liked when I was studying, um, well, high school. And well, I wanted to learn how to well, implement the language specifically, like how to turn an expression into something that could be computed. And that's why I started uh, doing K algebra. I would like to say I wanted to help teachers around the world. Uh, and I did, but that wasn't ultimately my uh, first reason to do so. The other reason also was that I was spending summer when I started uh, somewhere with very limited internet connection. And well, I needed something to practice my um, flourishing C++ skills on back then, or C even. So I started researching, and I ended up doing that. I actually remember going through the process of like choosing which toolkit to use. If I had to be using that cute thing, or GTK, or whatever. So I didn't come even from a KD perspective. I just wanted to start coding. I had, I was to start university uh, that year, and well, that's what I wanted to do. So I did it. Okay, we can squeeze one more in. Uh, the question comes from uh, Fiestas. What are the apps that currently excite you the most? <laughs> um, well, I find it really exciting how uh, we've, we're having all of the Plasma mobile applications happening. Like All of a sudden, we have a ton of Kirigami applications that, in practice, we could have had like three years ago, maybe. But the fact that we have all our phone ready right now are suddenly available, right? So things like the podcast application uh, is something I welcome. I am personally a big user of podcasts, and being able to use KD Software for it is something I am looking forward to. Actually, it's something that I was thinking, like, can I really uh, reliably move into Plasma Mobile? if uh, I'm not going to be able to listen to my podcasts. And well, it seems like this could be a thing. So that's uh, one problem less. Um, but obviously, there's a lot of applications that uh, we use generally every day. And we also take for granted, like, I don't know, Dolphin. It's important that they still exist. The other one that we're, I am using every day today, and I wasn't using every day like one year ago, was NeoChat, right? which is for connecting to Matrix. Um, very well done, very useful. Um, worth the mention. Of course. Yes, next year, we'll be using it for uh, experiencing Academy, right? <laughs> well, let's not make assumptions of what Academy is going to look like today <laughs> yeah. uh, in a year. Of course. OK, thank you very much, uh, Alesh. Uh, we'll see you later, of course, in the in the event. But for now, uh, we'll be moving on to the next uh, tag sessions. Thank you very much. Cool. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, everyone.